Hello everyone, myself Chandrasekhar. So guys, so many students are always confused with the velocity triangles for the turbine, pump as well as compressor. And that is the reason they are unable to understand the analysis. So this video is for all the students who struggle to understand the velocity triangle for these machines. So let us start with the turbine first. For the impulse or the reaction turbine, the velocity triangle, the basic principle for the velocity triangle is the absolute velocity V should always be the resultant of blade velocity plus the relative velocity of the fluid, whether it is inlet or at outlet. So first of all, try to understand the inlet velocity triangle for the reaction and the impulse turbine. So if the beta 1 blade angle is less than 90 degree, guide, rotor blade angle is less than 90 degree. So the tangent to the rotor blade, this is the rotor blade, is giving you VR1. So this angle is beta 1. And because the rotation is in clockwise, so U will be, U1 will be in positive x direction. So this U1 can be put here, this is U1. And the resultant of U1 plus VR1 is V1. U1 plus VR1, the resultant is V1. So this is the resultant which represents V1. So this angle is alpha 1. That is the guide vane angle. This is the guide vane. And this is the rotor blade. So when beta 1 is less than 90 degree, this is how the triangle will be drawn. What is beta 1? this angle is beta 1. If you resolve V1 into two components, the vertical component is Vf1 flow component and the horizontal component which will be from this point to this point. This is Vw1 or we can say when beta 1 is less than 90 degree, U1 will be less than Vw1, right? So similarly, let us talk about the another case when beta 1 equal to 90 degree. When beta 1 equal to 90 degree, in that case U1 will be equal to Vw1 or we can call it as radial blade at inlet. At inlet. So this is Vr1, Vr1 will be vertical and U1 will be towards right hand side and the resultant will be V1. This angle is alpha 1 guide vane angle and this angle will be beta 1 that is equal to 90 degree. So angle alpha 1 is inside the triangle, angle beta 1 is outside the triangle. If we resolve V1 into two components, then Vf1 is equal to Vr1 and U1 is equal to Vw1. So that is for beta 1 equal to 90 degree. Let us move to the next case. When beta 1 is greater than 90 degree, then U1 is greater than Vw1, right? So Vr1 will be coming like this and U1 will be horizontal only towards right hand side and the resultant is V1. This angle is alpha 1 inside the triangle and outside the triangle, the angle is beta 1. If we resolve absolute velocity of the fluid at 1, V1 into two components, so the vertical component will be Vf1 and the horizontal component that will be up to this point, that is Vw1. So Vw1 is less than U1. This is U1 actually. So these are the three inlet velocity triangle for the turbines. Similarly, there will be three outlet triangles. This is the rotor blade now. And this is the guide vane. So beat, um, exit velocity triangle depends on alpha 2. If alpha 2 is greater than 90 degree, if alpha 2 will be greater than 90 degree, this is Vr2. Beta 2 will be fixed and U2 will be horizontal only and the resultant will be V2. This is V2. Now beta 2 is fixed, so that is the angle inside the triangle and alpha 2 is variable, so that is outside the triangle. This is alpha 2 greater than 90 degree. When alpha 2 is greater than 90 degree, we can say u2 will be greater than vr2 cos beta 2. vr is the relative velocity, u is the blade velocity. If we resolve it into two components, v2 into two components, that is vf2 and vw2 will be this, it will be positive. Why it is positive? Vw2 will be positive because the direction of Vw2 is in the same direction of blade motion. Next, alpha 2 equal to 90 degree. 
this is vr2 this is u2 and this is v2 beta2 is inside the triangle blade angle at outlet and alpha2 guide vane angle which is 90 degree when alpha2 is equal to 90 degree we can call it as radial discharge at outlet the discharge is radial at outlet when alpha2 is equal to 90 degree we can say u2 is equal to vr2 cos beta2 exactly and vw2 is equal to 0 no whirl there is no whirl component no tangential component of the fluid velocity right v2 is equal to vf2 the third case is when alpha2 is less than 90 degree this is vr2 this is u2 and this will become v2 if you resolve into two components this is beta2 this angle is alpha2 which is less than 90 degree vf2 is vertical but vw2 is in backward direction so it is negative so here u2 will be less than vr2 cos beta2 or we can say vw2 is negative when alpha2 is less than 90 degree these are the inlet and exit velocity triangles for the turbine now let us draw the velocity triangles for the pump or compressor sorry i i have drawn na? yes I have drawn this case now the velocity triangle for centrifugal compressor or centrifugal pump so inlet velocity triangle will depend on alpha 1 alpha 1 can be less than equal to greater than 90 degree when alpha 1 is less than equal to greater than 90 degree we can say u1 greater than equal to less than vr1 cos beta 1 it is opposite of the exit velocity triangle of the it is same as the similar to the exit velocity triangle of the turbine or we can say vw1 greater than less than equal to zero these are the three possibilities and beta1 is fixed the exit velocity triangle for the turbine and the inlet velocity triangle for the compressor or the pump will be similar right so there are three possibilities this is let us say vr2 sorry vr1 and u1 is like this this is u1 and v v1 can be of three possibilities v1 can be like this v1 can be vertical and v1 can be like this there are three possibilities v1 can be like this or v1 can be like this or v1 can be like this this is angle beta 1 and here both the angles will be inside the triangle this is alpha 1 less than 90 this is alpha 1 equal to 90 and this is alpha 1 greater than 90 degree this is point 1 this is how we can draw these velocity triangle and if we resolve v1 into three components if v1 is less than 90 degree alpha 1 is less than 90 degree then vw1 will be this this will be vw1 positive and if alpha 1 greater than 90 degree then this will be vw1 which is negative right if you can see if alpha 1 is less than 90 degree then u1 will be greater than vr1 cos beta 1 vr1 cos beta 1 is vr1 cos beta 1 is this so these are the three possibilities for inlet velocity triangle similarly for outer velo outlet velocity triangle the outlet velocity triangle for the centrifugal compressor and the pump will be same as the inlet velocity triangle similar with the inlet velocity triangle of the turbine so here beta 2 less than equal to greater than 90 degree alpha 2 is fixed here alpha 2 will be fixed beta 2 will have three options if and based on beta 2 we can say u2 greater than less than equal to and less than vw2 so this is v2 this is u2 this is alpha 2 which is fixed so v 
R2 will have three possibilities. One is this, another is this, and the third one will be this. This is beta 2 less than 90 degree. If this is beta 2 equal to 90 degree, and this beta 2 greater than 90 degree. So when beta 2 is less than 90 degree, this is uh, Vf2 and Vw2 is this. Vw2 is fixed. So Vw2 will be u2 will be greater than Vw2. When beta 2 equal to 90 degree, u2 is equal to Vw2. When beta 2 is greater than 90 degree, then V u2 will be less than Vw2. u2 will be this much only. So these are the velocity triangles for the centrifugal compressor and centrifugal pump. In case of axial flow compressor, that diagram will be similar. This is inlet velocity triangle. This is V R1. This is U1. And this is V1. The only thing is the angles are measured with respect to axis. This is the axis, axial direction. The angles are measured with respect to axial direction. V1 is making an angle alpha 1, V1 is making an angle alpha 1 and VR1 is ang making an angle beta 1. This is the inlet velocity triangle. So if you resolve V1 into two components, this is VF1 and this much is VW1. VW1. Similarly, exit velocity triangle will be similar to the earlier case. The only thing is this is VR2 this is u2 and this is the absolute velocity v2 the only thing is the angles are measured with respect to axis so this is beta 2 and this angle is alpha 2 if we resolve v2 into two components this is vf2 and this much is vw2 all right so this is how you can draw the velocity triangles and once you are able to draw the velocity triangle based on this fact the absolute velocity is vector addition of relative velocity plus blade velocity in all the diagram this is the one which is the common uh, relationship if you are able to draw the diagram and understand this uh, these these angles then you will be able to write all the trigonometric as well as geometric relations correctly and you will be able to analyze the 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 expansion or the analysis of these equipments you are able to understand so thanks for watching this video see you in the next such video jai hind